Sorry, we were, we were cut off. Well, cutting it very short uh, and trying to fight Kodak, uh, we couldn't go on for sit-ins or anything else. Uh, we certainly couldn't go on for an economic boycott or be like asking the American people to stop taking pictures. And obviously, they're not going to. They have a, 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 almost a complete monopoly on the film negative material in this country. So we developed the stock proxy thing, but not with any hope of, uh, of being able to get enough proxies. You can't do that. Where if you fight General Motors, or right now we're fighting Commonwealth Edison in Chicago, and uh, U.S. Steel, Republic Steel, you know, they're uh, biggies. Uh, there are ways that you can take them, though. The bigger, if ever there was the axiom, the bigger they are, they are you know, the harder you crack up. Because the bigger they are, their rear end is also bigger, you know? And that's where you have to operate on. How do you mean that? How did you find the rear end of a large company? Well, rear end of a large company is very easy. You know, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's like a mountain, you know? Uh, no, I didn't you, say find it. I said, how do you define it? Their most vulnerable area. The vulnerable area. Yeah, you know, the place you can really get in and where it hurts. That have to do with money? It has to do, yeah, you know, yeah. mo money usually. Yeah. I've always said uh, that the only way the establishment can ever hear you is never through their ears, but only up their rears, you know? <laughs> yeah. Then they suddenly, they say, oh, that's what you meant, you know? I might like, mention that Mr. Alinsky grew up in a tough neighborhood in Chicago. <laughs> well, in fact, about the... I guess about the worst slum in Chicago. What is, it, was, it was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. No. I'd like, oh, you know, what, when people see the title of your book now, when they see it sitting on the shelf, they're going to think, is this one of those books that shows how to make Molotov cocktails? Or, uh, what, so to, in order to a help answer that, um, what do you think, for example, of the uh, killing of the judge in the Marin County Courthouse? And, well, I think two things. I think that in a free and open society, that kind of violence the kind of violence which I believe is completely justified under the Third Reich when you're fighting Hitler in that kind of a system is not justified here on, a, uh, on uh, let's say, uh, what you would call on a moral basis. And what I would also look at, it, look at it on is on a pragmatic basis in terms of pragmatic, revolutionary, radical activities. It's just as giving ammunition to the other side. It's that kind of a thing, or the weatherman bombings, uh, that let's say uh, a character like uh, like Mitchell and J. Edgar Hoover and some of these other pieces of living evidence that point to, to the fact that democracy is so vital that it can survive these kinds of characters, you know, that uh, it, for them to go in on, uh, on uh, I have to say the president, don't I? It's, it's hard for me to say President Nixon. It's just purely personal. But to go in and ask for, say, the invoking of the McCarran Internal Security Act, uh, because look what's happening, look what these people are doing. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, radicals like myself and so on will be tossed in a can. And under that particular act, then we, we are ju judged guilty unless we can prove ourselves innocent. It's just the reverse of our regular judicial process. So what, would you have advised Huey Newton not to praise those people at their funeral? I think that Huey made a serious mistake there. I think that right there the Panthers were blown. I think that was because you had a lot of middle class people who were beginning to wonder, were the police really persecuting them? Was this happening? And so on. But the moment that front page picture appeared all over, the judge with a shotgun up against his neck, and uh, then came that accolade, uh, it was too bad. It was a real blunder. And also and, wrong. I mean, you, you yeah, see well, it both sure as practical. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, well, if a thing is wrong, pragmatically I mean, wrong, it's wrong. And once, uh, once it's wrong, then it ipso facto becomes immoral, you know? Mm -hmm. But the other one follows the first one. Yeah. Have I left you, or do you know what I mean? No, we're leaving you because we have a message. We'll be right back. We're almost out of time. I was talking to Saul Alinsky, who you don't believe in bombing, but you do believe in dumping garbage in an alderman's yard. Didn't you do that once? Uh, probably was as shocking to him as if a bomb had gone off. Well, we were helping out the city. You see, the city, we, all of our alleys were dirty and, and all clobbered up with garbage and so on. And every time, and we were organized. Once you got the power to organize, you can do a lot of things. But you always play it inside the law. Because if you do it, tactically, it, uh, you can just kill them with it. The city said they didn't have the money to hire the extra garbage picker-uppers. So we decided that we'd help out the city. So we picked up all of our garbage and big trucks, 
And there was quite a dispute as to whether we should bring it down to Mayor Daly's office and dump it there, because then you see it would save the city a lot of money because they could have picked up all the garbage at once. <laughs> but right after that, we got all of our garbage picked up, yeah. Now, how can you say that about a man who praised you and said you were as concerned about Chicago as he is? Oh, there was my... Mayor Daly who said that. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, well we, we respect each other uh, when we... Uh, when both of us uh, managed to be able, when we're locked together in conflict, to be able to raise our eyes above the belt level, then we say, you know, we respect each other, but then we get right back to work again. Some of my uh, best enemies are friends of mine. <laughs> I gathered that. What's your advice to a kid who wants to, uh, who hates his parents in a middle-class suburb and doesn't want to grow up into a life of credit cards and country clubs? Well, this is what I've been spending an awful lot of time on. And we've got to begin from where we are. And, uh, and since if they recognize the fact that the power is in a middle class instead of just simply rejecting their own background as being decadent, degenerate, bourgeois, imperialistic, you know, all, all of those adjectives, uh, I'm not asking them to buy those values because I don't buy them myself but at least to start looking at them as a surgeon would look at a cadaver. Now, how can I use my knowledge of these values in terms of going back in and organizing these people? Because these are the people that are going to show which way the die is going to be cast on them. And uh, to go back in and start organizing middle classes for power and for their values, even if they have to start with pollution, we start with pollution. We know that pollution is a very serious thing. But to us, pollution uh, also involves pollution in the Pentagon, pollution in the White House, pollution and you know, pollution takes many forms. How do you convince a man Just who has a nice house in Westchester that he has anything to desire? Well, to be, he is, there's so little time to even, even yeah. scratch him. Uh, that guy usually is a very unhappy guy. You know, life out in these suburbs is as monotonous as it is down in a low-income community. Uh, if you start breaking down uh, what, what his life is, many a time he says to himself, you know, what the hell is this all about? You know, freeway driving to work and back, or you can take your trains. And, and uh, he wants a little piece of life. He feels that he's left out. It isn't just that kind of guy. It's also the, what we call the hard hat, blue collar, and so on. And uh, he, wants to, uh, he wants to get some direction in his life. He wants to know where he's going. He's scared to death, actually, of what's happening in this country. Uh, and uh, being that scared, uh, and uh, he has his own issues on it that are, that are beyond the, uh, just the materialistic ones. Even the materialistic ones, he's concerned about losing that. He doesn't know what's going to happen. And uh, I can't go into it in 10 seconds. I know you have no time seconds. left. Well, yeah. I wish you would come organize the upper classes. <laughs> we, we, we need help. Are you an upper classman? <laughs> <laughs> well, you upper, this year. your upper class people are very disorganized. You hate We are. This is why I, <laughs> I've, al I've always taken. What did you say? You were. They're very disorganized. They, they all hate each other's yeah. guts. This is part of our strategy when we fight against you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've always said that I could can persuade a millionaire to fund a revolution on on a Friday. The revolution take place on Saturday, from which he'd make an enormous profit on Sunday and he'd get shot on Monday. But he couldn't resist that Sunday profit, you know. <laughs> whenever, whenever, we, whenever we get into a battle with you guys. Do I really have to die on Monday, though? <laughs> well, you always think you're Can not you going to. Can we the ending for, uh, But uh, uh, whenever we get into a fight with any corporation, we always have the other corporations uh, looking and saying, gee, how can I make a buck out of this, you know? And so they unwittingly become little allies around on the, on the side. Uh, uh, but you have to become sophisticated as an organizer to know what tactics to use, how to use what we call mass jujitsu against the other side. You see, the other side's got much more power than you have. You've got to get them going against each other on the deal. And uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great adventure. I've had corporation guys say to me, this, I'm just tossing this in on the side, that have sat down with me, you know, really burning and and hung up tight on this whole proxy thing that we're going to be putting on them, uh, saying, look, you want to know something? This is after three or four scotches, you know. You want to know something? We, we hate your guts not just because of what you stand for, not just because of uh, the way you, you beat us at times on it, but 
Westerners, you seem to have such a time doing it. That's worse, you see. And this, and this is uh, unfortunately we're cut right off on that, but it sounds like a nice climax. We'll be right. Back.